Well, hi, I'm Jamie Lewis, and welcome back to TheBasis.net. Today, I'm going to start a, a cool little series that I'll come back to every now and again called Five Minutes to Better Bass. And all I'm going to do is just drop little bits of advice you know, from things that I've learned over the years to help you not only get the gig, but also to keep it. And here's the best part. All of this stuff is easy and applicable right now. In other words, you're not going to have to go home and practice a bunch of techniques or learn a bunch of stuff. You'll be able to do it today. And best of all, it's only going to take five minutes. So stick around. I know you're going to want to see this. Now, before we get going here, I just want to make sure I say a special thank you to GHS Strings for making this video possible. They've been manufacturing killer bass strings and guitar strings since 1964. In fact, uh, I'll be using their balanced nickel strings on the bass that you'll be hearing today. So make sure you go check them out at ghsstrings.com. All right, so I'm setting a five minute timer right now. So here's the first thing I'm gonna say, all right? Don't do this. Don't slap your strings on the upbeat of a groove when you're playing with an ensemble. Don't do that kind of thing. Check it out. In context, it sounds like this. Because here's the thing, this is going to drive your engineer nuts, whether it's front of house or, or mixing or recording engineer, because here's what you're doing. Every time you slap the strings, you're probably slapping harder than your actual playing volume. So your front of house engineer is looking at the meters and you're peaking, you're, he keeps going in the red, like I don't get it. And in the recording world, they're gonna have to go and, and cut each of those out. They're gonna crop it and then they gotta fade out and fade in. You're gonna drive the engineer or the producer nuts. That's not what you want. You don't want people to go, oh man, I don't want to work with this bass player because I got to do all this work to make them sound good. So all you got to do is just cut out that backbeat and play the notes you're supposed to play. Should sound like this. Okay, here's my second tip. Sometimes it's a really good idea to give the snare drum a little bit of room to breathe. In other words, check it out. Let's, let's say that I'm playing a groove like this. Notice how all of my notes were very long and connected. There, there was virtually no space in between them. The word we use for that is, is legato. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's, that. that's a perfectly good sound when it's appropriate. So like, if everyone's throwing these big long chords and the drummer's crashing away, like sure, go for it. But sometimes it's a great idea to, to taper your note off or, or, or just insert a rest or a pause at the exact moment that the snare drum hits. Check it out. It would sound something like this. That groove was like virtually the same as the first one, but the difference is I sort of carved out a little space in my bass line to allow room for the snare drum. As a mixing engineer, whether it be front of house or, or in the studio, you have really two big jobs. One is to make sure that lead vocal is just present in your face and, and you can hear it and it's distinct. And the next one is the snare drum because the snare drum is basically the backbeat against everything else, against the kick drum, probably the guitar lines. It's, it's the driving force in the ensemble. And you've made their job easier because you're not playing over on top of the snare drum. Well, now the snare drum is popping every single time. And that is something that they're gonna remember you for, and I guarantee you'll get called back. All right, and the last thing I'm gonna go over today is the proper way to sound check or to line check, because I think this is hilarious. I'll, I'll see players, you know, show up to sound check and they'll play something that sounds nothing like what they're going to be performing that night. And that's just ridiculous because the, the purpose of line check or sound check is to give the front of house engineer an accurate representation of, of what you're gonna play so that he can mix you with everyone else. So honestly, the way that I do sound check is this. I, uh, I just play a chromatic scale, not too fast at a moderate pace, kind of like this. And the reason 
why I play a chromatic scale is that's really good for front of house because he might hear it go ba -da 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 -da, and like one of those notes will be way louder than the rest. And he go, oh, cool, we're having a problem at 450 hertz or whatever. So now I can notch it and multi-band compress and, and like take care of it. And honestly, as a music director myself, this is so annoying. I can't stand it when like a new player shows up and he's just going to town playing a bunch of notes to try and, and impress me or everyone else. The fact that you're showboating makes me not want to hire you again. You don't have to prove anything during sound check. Prove to me how good you are during the gig. And the cool thing about everything I've said so far is it's all about impressing someone. Who? The music director, front house engineer, mixing engineer, the producer, the recording engineer, like you're making their jobs easier. They're gonna wanna call you back. They're gonna want to hire you again. And here's the thing, as a bass player, I can only travel in so many circles, but as a mixing engineer, you can do way more gigs. And if I know I've got a bass player on lock who makes my job easier and everyone else's, I'm gonna call that guy every single time. And actually, that's all the time we have for today's Five Minutes to Better Bass. Thanks again to GHS Strings for making this video possible. You can go check them out at ghsstrings.com. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel by hitting that button right over there. And if you really like what I do, then come hang with me at thebassist.net. You just gotta click on this button over here. And also be sure to check out The Bassist Podcast. New episodes go live each and every week. You can just pull up your smartphone, go to the podcast app and search for The Bassist Podcast. I guarantee you'll find it. And until next time, Stay well, and I'll see you again here at thebasis.net.